and welcome. It's Mary Ellen McGonigal here with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show. And as always, this is the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader markets. Another action-packed week. Lots of movement in the markets and volatility was there in full force. Certainly at the beginning of the week, we had a nice recovery rally today. We're going to get into all of that and a lot more. First up, sharing with you some of the headline news that drove price action and front and center. It was all about interest rates and the Federal Reserve's meeting on Wednesday. For those of you that watch the markets closely, you'll know that we had a very precipitous drop in the markets after the Federal Reserve's meeting. However, upon reconsideration, the markets liked what they heard and it had everything to do with Fed Chair Powell's comments after the meeting. And it was a bit dovish in the sense that he did say that he is not on the lookout or an increase in rates, the markets like that. And then also comments about rolling their bonds over rather than repurchasing them. That's bullish for interest rates as well. But let's go ahead and take a look at those markets and see how we closed for the week. And here we are. This is a daily price chart of the S&P 500. A couple of notable price action closes here. We can see that the index stopped just at its 50-day simple moving average that currently is standing at 5129. We closed at 5127, just below this key area of possible upside resistance. Now, we do have some positive characteristics coming into play. We have a higher low, which could at some point be classified as a double bottom if we see a nice continuation rally. We also have that RSI, that relative strength indicator now in positive territory up there above 50. That's good news. And taking a look at this MACD, this is a moving average convergent divergence. And we can see that black line is up through the red, and that's another positive signal. So we have a lot by way of positive price action shaping up. Now, those of you that follow my work closely and subscribe to my MEM Edge report, you will know that we are using this period back here at the end of October into the beginning of November as precedent. And I'll tell you, a lot of the characteristics in this downtrend reversal are shaping up as well, almost to the T. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at the NASDAQ. And that's an area that rose 2% on the day. And I did want to highlight here that we did close above that key 50-day simple moving average. Very good news. I'm going to be looking at this closer over the weekend to mark and see whether the volume is higher than average. I'm not quite sure where we closed on that. But we do have a positive RSI here, similar to that S&P 500. And take a look with the NASDAQ. I'm using a faster moving indicator. It's a stochastic, and it talks and covers money flow characteristics. And it did turn positive. We can see other periods when we had that positive RSI coupled with positive stochastics back here with that November reversal, that nice reversal at the beginning of this year. And here we are again. So I like what I see, certainly in the NASDAQ. Now from here, we're going to drill down further and take a look at another key component that I did share with you last week. And that is the number of stocks in the NASDAQ that are above their key 50-day simple moving average. And this is all about having breadth within the market so that more than just those mega cap names are faring well. We're also going to take a look at those M7 names as well because there is our characteristic shaping up there. But if we take a look, we can see since over the last two plus weeks, we are continuing to see a nice broadening out in the markets. Again, using that period back here as precedent. Overall, I like what I see. And from here, let's go ahead and take a look at those 11 underlying sectors in the S&P 500, a two-month daily price chart view. And we can see that there is some areas of the market that are continuing to remain up in this upper left quartile. I've sorted this list 
by a relative strength indicator. Your stronger areas up here in this left quartile, weaker down in the lower right. And take a look, utilities and staples up here at the forefront. Again, certainly utilities are on the move. I did add a utility stock to the MEM Edge suggested holdings list. Lots of bullish reasons that utilities are beginning to spring to life here. Also, staples at the forefront. We're seeing companies coming out with pretty good numbers there. And another area of note is the fact that consumer discretionaries, which had been languishing down in that lower quartile, up here at the forefront of 1.3% outperforming the broader markets. Now, I will tell you this decline peak to trough here, we almost got into bear market territory. It was down 9%. So today, I will be talking a lot about this concept of downtrend reversals as we progress through our view of the broader markets. Let's go ahead and make sure that you have a look at technology. Technology also outperformed up 1.5%, up almost 3% today. So you can see that most of that strength is all of it really from today's price action on that gap up. We're not quite fully bullish. We are still below that 50-day simple moving average. But note, please, the strength that we are seeing in this this tech sector, we are going to get more into that as we move through today. Weakest area this week, energy XLE down 3.8%. And we'll go ahead and take a look at that price of oil that was down this week. One of the primary reasons that we are seeing a deterioration in energy, but also when you look at energy stocks, historically, they will fare well in a rising interest rate, rising inflation backdrop. So last week, we did see that drop in certainly the interest rate component. And this is a view that I find very powerful as far as keeping you on top of where that strength is beneath the surface. It's really important. You want to make sure that you are in that right industry group, in that right sector, because price movement in your stock is impacted by those two components, almost 50% of your price movement. So we've talked about where that sector strength is. Let's go ahead and look beneath the hood further and take a look. We did see bank stocks on the move last week. This is KRE of 3%. We're seeing vibrancy in this area. And it does have something to do with a declining interest rate environment. Also taking a look, if you would, at that yield curve, you'll want to have a good idea of where that stands so that these banking stocks are going to be more profitable with a steeper yield curve. As we move through, biotechs up at the forefront. Now, many of you that watch this weekly will know that this area has been generally very, very weak. We are seeing this nice bottle, double bottom formation. We did almost close above that 50-day, but certainly we are seeing relative strength up 5% this week. Heavyweight Amgen is one reason, but there were other bright spots in biotechs. This is one of those areas that is very similar to that downtrend reversal October into November it was led by these biotech names. So we can also see small cap stocks up 1.8% for the week. We did close just at that 50-day simple moving average, which is at 202. We closed at 201.9, but we are certainly firming up and that is good news. You want to see these small caps participate and the fact that they outperformed is quite constructive. Moving through, you also again on that weaker front, here we are with Brent crude oil down quite a bit. Everything to do with inventory being reported as high among oil stockpile, and that's certainly not good for the group. Also, you want to be aware of this yield on that 10-year treasury, and we can see that we did close the day up just a little bit from where we were earlier, but we did close on that 10-year treasury at 4.5, which is certainly below that 4.76 that we hit back here at the end of April. So this is going to be a very key driver and most certainly of those growth stocks. We talked about technology and consumer discretionary on the move higher outperforming, and those are two of your biggest 
by way of high growth stocks. Also of note is semiconductors. You want to be aware before participating in stocks in this sub-industry grouping. I'm going to be taking a very close look at NVIDIA and you'll want to make sure that this industry group is constructive. This is SOXX, the iShare Semiconductor ETF. And you can see finding upside resistance at that 50-day. But we do have a positive RSI. And we have that MACD firming up and heading north. Another ETF that can be quite helpful for this grouping is the Vanek Vectors Semiconductor, SMH. And it, too, is looking constructive. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at NVIDIA because the stock certainly did not outperform last week. It was up 1.2%. However, what the stock did do is firm up further. And by that, I mean today's 3.5% rally pushed NVIDIA back above its key 50-day simple moving average, a real area of possible upside resistance. You can see we got pretty good volume. I would have a lot more confidence if that volume spiked. But take a look, that RSI now up here in positive territory. You can see that MACD black line up through the red, and it just inched into positive territory. So NVIDIA does look bullish. However, given the group dynamics and the fact that we are just entering bullish territory here, particularly with that RSI, I would say that you can certainly begin accumulating, but you will want to keep your eyes on the technology sector, that semiconductor group, and of course, overall sentiment regarding interest rates. Now, from here, I did want to point out volatility because the good news is this VIX is down here at 13.5, well off its highs that we saw during that period when interest rates were up at that 4.67 level. So good news there as well. Now, from here, I'm going to share with you some downtrend reversals. But before we do that, I do want to take us to the Magnificent Seven stocks and take a look at these names because the names that were up the most on the week were those that were down and out the most. And this is important because it does carry through throughout the broader markets. And I'm sharing with you how you can put a list together. And then from here, you have various ways that you can view it on a regular basis. Summary is going to give you that percent change on the day. From here, it also you can get that RRG, that relative strength view. I'm going to take us over to that candle glance and sort this by RSI descending. And what I did want to highlight for you is the fact that your biggest movers this week were Apple and Tesla. And take a look big gap up 6%. Apple was up 9.4% for the week. Now, this is not a pre-chart, but I will tell you, we are above all key areas of possible upside resistance. We have that MACD just getting into positive territory. So good news there. Let's take a look at Tesla. They came out with some good news this week that had the stock gapping up, and it ended the week up 7.5%. Now, the reason I'm highlighting this is the fact that both stocks are very oversold. If you take a look at the names in that Magnificent 7 area that underperformed, it's going to be Alphabet as a per instance, and the stock, you can see it had that gap up after the release of their numbers, but it did end the week. Let's take a look on this weekly chart. And we can see that it was down almost 3%. Also of note, we'll go ahead back to that weekly again, is the fact that the stock is trading at a near-term high in price. So in the end, those names that among the Magnificent Seven that were even underperforming last week are going to be names that were sitting up at their near-term highs. So Carrying that through to the broader markets, I wanted to share with you some downtrend reversals by way of stocks that came out with strong earnings and in so doing reversed their recent downtrends. And these are areas of the market that are having the most by way of upside movement. And here's Bar Ward Warner, BWA, and we can see the stock had a nice gap up into a base breakout 
on Thursday, super high volume, nice continuation rally above that 200 day simple moving average. We now have a positive RSI and that MACD had a bullish crossover and a move into positive territory. Another downtrend reversal that we can take a look at, and again, on strong earnings is Regeneron. Actually, the company came out and spoke very highly of their eye disease drug as far as future growth prospects. And here again, we can see the stock reversing its downtrend with a close above that 50-day simple moving average, positive RSI. And then we have that nice bullish MAC crossover, nice high volume characteristics. By way of looking at a possible example of a downtrend reversal, this is going to take us back to last fall. This is Decker's Outdoor, and you can see that this company had a deteriorating chart, certainly the downtrend very firmly in place. And this is in line with what we were seeing elsewhere in the broader markets. And take a look, this is that gap up on earnings, which pushed the momentum indicators into positive territory and a nice lengthy advance. This is one of the bigger winners from my MEM Edge report. We hung on to it until it broke support, but it is on our long-term list, so we're keeping an eye on Deckers. Now, from here, I also wanted to share with you some names that had base breakouts last week and into nice continuation rallies. And in essence, when we are talking about these broader markets from studies that have been done over the years, this period of consolidation, this pullback that we've had in the markets, about 80 to 90% of your basis can be built during this period, particularly if earnings season is in place. And that's the case here. Here's LDOS. We can see this nice gap up into a continuation rally. Now, it is certainly overbought, but when we get that gap up into a base breakout, you will want to add a five-day simple moving average. And that's this blue line that now becomes your new area of support. And then use historical precedence as your guide, going back to this prior quarter gap up into a nice continuation rally. And another example that we have here is Garmin. This particular company also experienced a nice gap up into a base breakout and into a continuation rally. And we've seen it again, historically going back to their last two prior quarters, gaps up into a nice continuation rally. And again, back here in late fall. So using historical precedence as your guide and on the lookout for those base breakouts on heavy volume, oftentimes investors think that you may have missed the move given the sharp advance in response to earnings, but in fact, not so. Now, what another characteristic that has taken place this week is the fact that we are seeing these downtrend reversals begin to evolve going into earnings. And this is where you can put together a nice watch list. We're looking at Jacob's Solution. This is a heavy construction stock. We can see that downtrend reversal at close above that 50-day RSI in positive territory and that MACD crossover. This particular company is due to report their earnings on Tuesday, and it's in a group that's had a couple of other big winners in response to earnings. Another downtrend reversal going into earnings is BLDR. This is Builder's First Source. And take a look, we close just above that 50-day simple moving average, RSI in positive territory, and then that nice black line up through the red on that MACD. They are due to report their earnings on Tuesday as well. And we have historical precedence of gapping up in response to earnings into a nice rally. Last up here is a company that is due to report their earnings on Monday. This is Fidelity National Information, F. IS. And you can see that we closed above that 50-day simple moving average, just dipped into positive territory here with that RSI up there at 52. We do not have that MACD crossover yet, but keep this on your watch list because it's a stock that historically, when it gets going, can have a significant advance. This is true, similar to other companies that I've shared with you. And actually, one last name that I'm going to share with you is AFRM. Do to report their numbers on Wednesday and take a look. This sharp 
downtrend has been reversed with a close back above that 50-day. We have that RSI up there in positive territory. They're due to report on Wednesday, and we've seen a number of other companies in this industry group fare quite well. Next week, I did not mention relative to earnings. We also have a number of large companies due to report that you'll want to keep your eye on as the markets do tend to trade. If these companies come in with numbers, you can see Disney, they're due to report next week. Their prior period here, a gap up on news, but it's another possibility for a downtrend reversal to shape up. Palantir, closely watched AI-related stock, also in the throes of a potential downtrend reversal here. We have a bullish RSI just at that 50-day simple moving average. Again, all about getting that watch list together for next week if we see a nice continuation rally and the markets continue to remain strong, it could continue to become quite interesting. And that's it for this week. Everyone have a fantastic weekend. Hit that like button if you like what you've seen, and I'll look for you here next Friday.